Welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about a SQL concept known as joins, which is going to allow us to query data from multiple tables in the same time. Um, before we get into actually working with joins in particular, uh, we're going to talk about a couple topics. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new um, SQL type uh, that we're going to for columns in our database called date time, which is going to allow us to basically store a timestamp, uh, a, a date time value. And then we're going to talk about how um, currently when in our web application, when a user uh, creates an order or submits an order in the store, it actually emails uh, the store administrator um, the information about the order. Well, we're going to be changing that system um, in our next version of the web application to where it's actually just going to store the order information in the database as opposed to sending an email. Uh, so we're going to discuss in today's lesson about how we might model orders um, within our database. Uh, it's going to involve an orders table, it's going to involve some, a customer's table, and then that's going to bring us to our concept of joins, which is basically where we're going to be uh, running, learning how to write queries that get information from multiple tables. And we'll see, and, and that's going to relate to how we pull information about orders from our database. Um, as far as joins go, we're going to talk about something called join conditions, which is basically like a where condition that's going to allow us to specify what data we want to pull from multiple tables. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, two other related concepts, one known as an implicit, jo implicit joins, uh, something known as aliases, which is going to uh, make your SQL statements uh, cleaner looking. And then also we're going to go over uh, required homework, which is going to have you uh, basically set up the orders, um, the tables in your, in, our, in your web store database so that uh, you'll be able to run our next version of the web application, which is going to store orders within the MySQL database. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about again is, the, is a new data type called uh, date time. Uh, it's a MySQL data type and allows you to basically store a timestamp. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to create a table called orders, you might have a number of different columns and this is an abbreviated create table statement. Let's say we have an order ID that's an unsigned int and I left out maybe, it, maybe it's a primary key that's an auto increment but um, that's just one column and then let's say we have a, a column called date time ordered, which is going to be the uh, date and time um, that a order was processed. Well, we can store that as a data type called uh, date time. And basically what that does is that stores um, a date and time uh, stamp for uh, that column. So for example, uh, in MySQL, it stores them in this format here where you have the four month year, excuse me, four digit year, two month, two digit month, two digit day, and then you have uh, two digits for hours, minutes, and seconds. Um, and basically what you can do is we're going to be creating a timestamp when an order is processed. Currently, um, we have been using the date function um, within our email order function to basically generate a timestamp on our order. For example, when we uh, place an order on a website, on our in our current web store, it shows you a date and says your order was placed at so-and-so time. Well, we're still going to use that date function, but we're going to be storing it in the database. Um, we're going to have to uh, specify how we um, create the date string because for MySQL, it needs to be in this format here. Um, and basically, um, we're going to be using date with, uh, as we know with the date function, you provide it some sort of formatting string um, that's going to allow you to describe how you want the date stored. So when we add an order to our database from uh, PHP, which we're going to see in our next web application, we're going to be using the date function to generate this date string that we're going to store in the database. Um, one thing to note is that you could also just store dates as regular strings in the database. For example, this right here is just a regular string. In essence, you could have and just have that be a string and then store that in your database and be able to extract information from it. Well, there's, an, there's a uh, distinct advantage to using the date time data type as opposed to maybe using um, a var car or uh, for, you could use even a car for this type of data because it's, it's going to be of a known length. Um, in that, uh, my, because MySQL will know that it's a date time, um, that the column data represents a date time and is not just a string, you can perform operations on it. For example, uh, you'll be able to uh, do things like maybe you only want to get, let's say you want to query your database and say, give me all the orders that happened in the last month. Well, MySQL will be able to um, use the fact that a particular column is a date time column 
uh, to be able to um, basically develop a query with results based on criteria you specify. If you had just specified it as a VAR car, um, for example, MySQL won't be able to do that.